welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd take a quick minute to answer a question that I'm often asked on my YouTube channel as well as in my Facebook groups. My name is Tamara Casey and I design clothing patterns for 64 different fashion dolls. Two questions that are frequently asked of me is, do I have patterns to fit Barbie? And can you reduce other fashion doll clothing patterns to fit Barbie? There was a time when Barbie was one of the most sewn for dolls on the market, but even Barbie has changed over the years. If you look at the product line now, she used to be just one size and then eventually just two with the addition of the Silkstone Barbie. In more recent years, Mattel has increased their product line to represent more of what our world actually looks like. That being said, instead of having one or two body styles, there's actually over six. So today I thought it would be fun to show you how you can take one of those six body styles from Mattel and create an amazing well-fitting dress for your favorite curvy Barbie. If you've been interested in drafting your own sloper for your Barbie, you've probably seen some of the other YouTube videos available out there that use the tape method. That is the method that we're going to go quickly through today, but we're going to take it past the step of just wrapping the doll in plastic and then masking tape and cutting out the pieces. After we've drafted our pattern and we're ready to sew, if you want to stay tuned till the end of the video, we'll take our actual pattern pieces that we've created and turn it into the actual dress. The design of today's pattern is going to be for a princess seam dress. It'll be comprised of primarily six pieces, including a front, side front, back and side back, and then we'll add a facing for the neckline as well as the armholes. I'm hoping this will be a really fun first starter project if you haven't drafted your own pattern before. So let's go ahead and get started. All you need is the few tools shown here and we'll go ahead and get started. So you're gonna grab just some saran wrap or plastic wrap from your kitchen, a pair of scissors, the doll that you wanna create the basic sloper for, some masking tape and a pen. From there, we're gonna grab the plastic wrap, cut it into small strips, wrap it around the doll's body, equivalent to what would be considered a little black dress, add the tape over the top as best we can to outline the silhouette of the body and cut our basic pieces. All right, so we have our Barbie completely wrapped. And the things you wanna keep in mind when you go through the first two steps in the process is, you want the plastic wrap to completely cover the body and that's just gonna help you get the tape off a little bit easier. I have seen some other videos where they tape directly on the doll's body, but I'm afraid that that could distort the pattern pieces when you try to peel it off of her body in case you don't have a thick layer of tape. So the first section was to put the plastic wrap on, which covered everything we put the tape under. And then we wanna make as smooth of a surface with that masking tape as we can. You also want to make it thick enough that you actually can cut it without distorting the pieces. So from there we're going to grab our pen and we're going to make some markings on the actual doll and then we'll get our pattern pieces cut out. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the neckline and the armholes are completely distinct. If you're careful with putting the tape on, you should get a pretty good wrap around the armholes, which can be really helpful. The next thing you're going to do is find the center of her actual torso or the thinnest part of the waist, and that's going to divide her in half horizontally. Then you want to go down the front of her actual top vertically at the middle of the front of the um, bodice, and you want to do the same thing in the back. 
The only other things we're gonna need as far as markings as we get started is possibly the widest uh, area in her hips in case you wanna use that dimension going forward to measure the hem length. And then you also wanna go with the princess seam. And in this case, it's gonna go from the armhole to the nipple crest and then down uh, the front of her bodice. So let me get the pen and we'll get those things marked and then we'll get our pattern actually cut out. With those lines drawn on the pattern, we have everything we need to get our dress constructed. As you can see, this is gonna be the center front of the dress, the side front, the side back, and the actual back section. Since we're only doing a princess seam dress from this particular tutorial, we are just gonna cut that dress in half and I'm not gonna worry about marking the other side. I have cut those out off camera, so I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. But if you are getting started, I recommend just a sharp pair of scissors. Be very careful not to uh, puncture or scratch your doll. Cup, cut up uh, the plastic all the way through the center and just be really patient with your cuts until you come out with your actual pattern pieces. After we've trimmed the extra plastic wrap off towards the edges of the pattern pieces, we're gonna lay them on a blank piece of paper. We're gonna start with a straight line with our ruler, and that's gonna be the center front of the dress.
Next, we're gonna grab the back piece and do the same thing. You do wanna leave some space between your pieces so that you can draw in that quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once you have your pattern pieces drawn out, you wanna work with one piece at a time and identify how they're gonna actually be laying on the fabric. So in general, when you're making a pattern, you want the uh, pattern arrows to go with the grain of the fabric, and that's generally gonna be in a, a vertical direction. So this is the direction that you would lay this piece onto your pattern, and this is actually gonna be the fold. So you can indicate which direction the grain is gonna go on your pattern before you actually add the seam allowance. Lay it out on the table in front of you, you can see the construction steps that we've gone through so far to create our project. We started with that plastic wrap and masking tape to get a sloper, a four piece sloper for a princess seam dress for our curvy Barbie. We took those sloper pieces and transferred them to paper, adding a seam allowance for every area of the garment that would need to be sewn together. Then we did our test fit. I used just a basic cotton to do the first test fit and to determine if I wanted the neckline to be different, if I wanted to lengthen the hemline, and to see how I wanted that garment to actually close in back. So I also added a little bit of extra to the back of the dress. The last two pattern pieces you need to create before you're able to start construction of your dress is the neck facing as well as the armhole opening facing. So to get that started, it's actually very simple. You're gonna take your front center front piece, you're gonna lay it on a vertical line. You can't see it here, but it is on the pattern. I'm gonna place it right onto the paper and I'm gonna draw right around the neckline. You wanna take into account that you are gonna have a shoulder seam. So you wanna lay your back pattern piece over that uh, front piece in indicating where that shoulder seam is actually gonna be um, sewn. Once you have that sewn, you can see you're gonna draw it out and that's gonna create the back neck facing. To create the armhole facing, I've temporarily taped the side front section to the front and the back section to the back. Then you're just gonna lay it on the actual graph paper um, and you're gonna fold it over at the shoulder seam so that you're taking that seam into account and just outline it with the uh, front and back section in tow, just like that. Then you can make the width of the facing about a half of an inch, and that will make sure that it lays nicely on the inside of the dress. So I went ahead and I already cut these two pattern pieces out as well, and I'm gonna apply those to the fabric as we lay our uh, pattern out to get this project started. This particular piece of fabric is about seven inches by 14 inches. The grain line of the fabric or the selvage edge is right here on the right hand side. So you do want to look back to your pattern pieces and remember that you want your pattern to line up with that grain line of the fabric. So we marked our pattern pieces so that we would know going forward how we could easily cut this out. The front is cut on a fold and the other pieces are cut too. The neck facing is a cut one and the armhole facing is a cut two. You could consider using a different fabric for the facing if you were worried about staining to your doll. Since we are using a black fabric, you do wanna keep those type of considerations in mind. So now that we know how many cuts we need of each pattern piece, and we also have identified the grain line of the fabric, we're gonna lay our pattern pieces out and securely pin them to the fabric, folded in half with pins.
with our pattern pieces cut out, we're gonna go ahead and start construction on the sewing machine. We're gonna be using a quarter inch seam allowance throughout construction of the dress, and I'm gonna be using a stitch length of about a two to a two and a half. Before I take the pieces over and start to sew, I wanna take my scissors and take some small clips in towards the curved edges of the pieces. That's just gonna ease construction as I get ready. If you're new to sewing, I really encourage you to use your pins to stabilize your pieces. I've been sewing for a long time and find it easier to do some sewing by manipulating the fabric and moving it with my fingers rather than pinning everything down nice and tight but I encourage you to do whatever is most comfortable for you. So once we get those clips in towards those curved edges, we're gonna take the side front section and sew it to the front section of the dress as step number one. As you can see, by not pinning it all the way, but using your fingers to kind of manipulate that curve, it's a little bit easier to get a better result around those type of areas. So we're gonna repeat that on the other side now. Before we take that over to the ironing board and press those seams open, we're gonna grab the back sections as well as the back side sections and sew them together as well. All right, now that we have the side front sections and the side back sections sewn to the other pieces, we're gonna take all of them over to the ironing board and give them a press. Then we'll sew the front of the dress to the back of the dress at the shoulder seam. With our shoulder seam sewn, we're gonna grab our facing pieces and we're gonna start with the neck piece. We're gonna place it right sides together and sew around from the back edge to the other back edge. It can be helpful when you're placing the neck facing onto the neck if you take a few clips in towards that curved edge before you actually sew it together. You do want to check both sides of that neck facing before you actually trim into the seam allowance to make sure everything looks okay. And then you're actually going to cut it pretty close to that seam. You're going to press the facing up and then to the inside of the garment and press it along the neckline. At that stage, you can top stitch it if you prefer, or you can leave it just as is.
Now that you have the neck facing in place, you're gonna grab those uh, sleeve facing pieces, pin it right sides together to both sleeve openings and sew them in place. With the armhole facings in place, we're gonna go ahead and take it over to the ironing board, trim it towards that seam allowance, and press the facing to the inside. And then we're actually gonna sew the side seams of the dress and then get it hemmed. So here's the progress with our dress so far, and I think it's actually coming together quite well. The next step is to sew those side seams. And what I did want to bring to your attention is if you pull the facings up and you sew the side seams and the facing together, you'll have a nice finished edge there at the armhole opening. Let's grab our doll and get a quick fit. So here's a quick fit to our curvy Barbie and I think her little black dress turned out pretty good so far. We do still need to hem it. So if at this point you felt like that was a little bit too short, you could always add a flirty ruffle, but you have a lot of options once you get the proper fit through the body. So as we turn the dress over, we are gonna need to turn the left back opening under at least a quarter of an inch, add some snaps or Velcro to finish the look, and then maybe add some accessories. So let me go ahead and turn the hemline up and get that sewn. Do those few finishing touches on the back closure, and then maybe we'll add some jewelry, a cute pair of shoes or boots, and a belt, and we'll get our final photographs. With the hem edge sewn, we're just gonna place the dress right sides together and sew that center back seam. You just wanna remember to leave enough room that the doll can slip in comfortably and then do snaps from that opening to the back of her neck. It can be helpful to hold the facings in place by just folding them in towards that seam and just doing a couple of stay stitches right in place so that the armhole seams stay intact and you can do the same thing at the neck doing the stay stitch at the shoulders.
To answer those initial questions about doll sizing, I recommend that you always try to find a pattern as close to the doll that you're sewing for. If you are trying to reduce something from a larger doll, there's generally going to be a need for modifications or adjustments based on the original and unique design of that particular doll's body. And remember, with a little bit of practice, you can create your own perfectly fitting pattern. As you can see from the final pictures, I think we did pretty good with our pattern making skills for today. If you have any questions, as I said, please list it in the comment section below. My best tip and advice is to just practice. It's really fun to play with different techniques to make patterns. And once you kind of get the hang of it, you can add a lot of different design elements to make the outfit uniquely your own. So I really appreciate you guys coming by with me today. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.